cool article out of uh, Defense Blog today. U.S. Navy evaluates laser weapon aboard destroyer. What a cool picture. What a cool picture. That's what got my attention. How can you not say that, look at that and say, damn, that's cool. Be sure to like and subscribe and we're going to get into this a little bit. U.S. Navy evaluates laser weapon aboard destroyer. The U.S. Center for Countermeasures has released new details of the testing of the high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance system, Helios, a directed energy, DE, weapon installed on the Arleigh Burke class destroyer USS Preble. The annual report published in July 2025 outlines the Navy's demonstration of Helios aboard USS Preble, verifying its functionality, performance, and capability in engaging an unmanned aerial vehicle target. According to the report, CCM supported the Navy's dem demonstration on USS Preble to verify and validate the functionality, performance, and capability of the HEL with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance system against an unmanned aerial vehicle target. Against drones. A laser against drones. USS Preble is the first U.S. Navy vessel equipped with Helios, a 60 kilowatt class directed energy laser weapon developed by Lockheed Martin. It's also the first laser weapon integrated with the Aegis combat system. A key feature enhances the ship's ability to track and engage neutralized targets. And this is Helios, right here. That's just a rendering. Obviously, I don't think they want to have too many close-up pictures of it. For obvious reasons. So we'll just go back to this really awesome Star Wars looking kind of thing right there. It looks like a phaser almost from Star Trek. But this is the future. That's the future. And I remember reading an article, and I was actually able to find it this time, years back. This is from 2020. With laser weapons coming, the U.S. Navy's newest supercarrier has space and power to spare. A major difference with Ford over Nimitz class predecessors is its twin A1B nuclear reactors that can produce more than three times the electrical power of the reactors on Nimitz, more than 100 megawatts. And that laser was a 60 kilowatt laser. Now I'm not saying you're going to have super death lasers or anything like that. But what I'm saying is you can mount a whole bunch of these 60 kilowatt dazzler systems right here Helios against low flying aircraft incoming supersonic subsonic cruise missiles this uh, the Helios says it's also good against waterborne targets so small small craft this would have saved us 250 million dollars very likely in our latest when our latest round against the Houthis the 15 month Red Sea naval battle that saw us expend over 200 missiles ADSM 6 missiles for over 2 million dollars a piece now I'm not saying that this laser could have shot all everything that the SM6 shot down of course not these aren't going to be able to intercept any ballistic missiles. And a laser, as of this moment, cannot intercept a hypersonic missile due to the plasma ball at the front of the hypersonic glide vehicle. However, in another article I wasn't able to find again, MIT says they have had a breakthrough in laser technology and that they're las they have laser systems that now can penetrate the plasma field at the front of a hypersonic vehicle. Things are coming fast and furious, guys. Killing missiles with missiles. A retired naval officer and analyst with a strategic and budgetary assessment said Ford could use a boost in survivability department and the Ford's powerful reactors to help them get there. To improve self-defense on carriers, you could put lasers on there to support the short-range self-defense capability, Clark said. Because the big problem with lasers right now is power management. You can build a three or four hundred kilowatt laser, but for one, it's a big footprint, so you have to find a ship big enough to put it on, and two, you have to have enough power to actually supply it. 
So you're going to need a capacitor to bank somewhere on the ship. You need a generator big enough to provide it continuously on the Ford. You get that. Clark argued for years that the Navy needs to get away from trying to shoot down missiles with missiles because of the saturation attack from Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, or anyone else who might have cause to attack a United States naval vessel could force a cruiser or destroyer to expend all of its missiles and still have not defeated the threat. Which is something that we've talked about on this channel numerous times. The production capabilities for our missiles is woeful. At this time we only produce about 150 SM-6 missiles each year. There is now in the budget to increase that production to 300 SM-6 missiles per year by 2028. We don't have the production capacity at this time to supply a near peer conflict. We can supply against a Houthi or one or two other small adversaries with limited missile supplies. But if we were in a near peer situation, being inundated by DF 17s, DF 26 ballistic and hypersonic cruise missiles, the Navy would take casualties in numbers we haven't seen since World War II. And this is a great way to, one, limit that cost, two, offset our production woes, and three, give us a capability that other countries aren't going to be able to emulate for years. The only other one is going to be China, and I'm sure they've got a direct copy of this because they found it floating in the toilet or something. Because that's how they are. Winky, winky, nod, nod. But this, groundbreaking, groundbreaking. And you know the Dazzler units, the actual units themselves are going to get smaller. They're going to get smaller and more powerful. I would love to see all United States ships bristling with these things. Bristling with them. I have advocated that we look into high altitude, high altitude dirigibles with small portable nuclear reactors which do exist. Those reactors to power lasers like this, obviously a little more powerful because the biggest issue you have right now, you can attack and defend against ballistic missiles, but hypersonic missiles are going to be harder because you have something called the horizon and the curvature of the Earth. That missile is going to be there in the blink of an eye from the time you see it to the time it hits you. Altitude will give you a little bit more time. Dirigible. Reactor. Lasers. 65,000 feet to 80,000 feet. They can be steady right there over a carrier battle group and offer mutual defending each other. The aircraft defend the airspace up to and around the dirigible. The dirigible defends the carrier battle group from the hypersonic missiles to the best of its capability before the actual CAG has to engage. Multi-layer defense. Thinking outside the box. Is a dirigible the answer? I don't know. But I'm trying to get something that is at the pace of a carrier battle group, has the duration of a carrier battle group, would be able to carry the necessary firepower and electrical power to do the mission of defending the carrier battle group or the territory of the United States or a base wherever you want to station this thing. Either way, I think this is a step in the right direction. And I think that is one of the coolest damn pictures I've ever seen. Go Navy! This is the future. All of our ships, 
in the future will have multiple laser systems like that. This doesn't mean phalanx is going out of, out of uh, existence yet, but its writing is now on the wall. You see the future, and the future is now. I do appreciate you coming in and listening, and I thank you. <laughs>